The Kinevo is specialised long travel, aggressive geometry e-bike. For 2020, it gets a complete refresh. With 180mm of travel front and rear, the Kinevo's intentions are pretty clear to see from the off, especially as up front of the expert version of the bike is a RockShox Boxer downhill triple clamp dual crown fork. Specialised wanted to make the most capable e-bike they've ever made, and I think they've pretty much hit the mark with the new Kinevo. There's no getting away from the fact that the new Kinevo is designed to be an absolute beast of a bike. We might have expected to see a bike that looked similar to the new Enduro and the new Demo downhill bike, with a suspension system that's low slung in the bike. However, because of the frame architecture constraints of having a motor in there, Specialized have gone for a design much more similar to the new Stump Jumper Evo with that sidebar design and a regular 4-bar FSR suspension linkage. This delivers the 180mm of travel at the back, but Specialized say they have worked on it to make sure that they've still got that slightly rearward axle path at the start of its stroke to give a momentum carrying ride that should help keep speed high when you're hitting rough technical terrain. As we've seen with the Stump Jumpers and with the Enduro, Specialized have gone with S sizing for the Kinevo. This means longer reaches and shorter seat tubes, which means that for a given size rider, there's more frame size options available, depending on whether you want a really long bike or one that's a touch smaller and arguably more agile. Specialized only offer the Kinevo with an aluminium frame, however it seems like they've done a lot of work on this over the previous version of the bike. They reckon they've dropped about a kilo of frame weight despite increasing the travel and sort of the aggressiveness and stiffness of the frame. They've done this by re-engineering the way that the motor is mounted into the frame and also the down tube. On a lot of e-bikes the battery drops out the bottom of the bike and this basically means you have a big hole in the down tube which needs a lot more material to maintain the stiffness of that tube. However, Specialized have designed a system whereby the battery slides out the bottom of the frame if you need to remove it. However, obviously the battery can be charged when it's still within the frame. So while the frame has dropped around a kilo in weight and there's a bit of weight off the motor as well, the components have got heavier, but this means more capability. Speaking of the motor, which is obviously a key part of an e-bike, this is the new 2.1 version of Specialized Bros motor, and it's the same that you'll see on the latest version of the Turbo Levo. It's an improvement over the 1.3, which is the previous version of the bike, in a number of ways. More sensors, more efficiency, lighter weight. They've also worked on the integration features of the new bike. There's a bar mount for changing the modes, and the on-off switch, which they have a fancy name for, is located on the top of the top tube, so it's a little bit easy to access and see what the battery power is. The updated motor from the 1.3 to the 2.1 has had a number of other performance improvements. The new motor has a 410% peak power assistance level, so if you put in 100 watts with your own legs, you'll get an additional 410 watts out of the motor. And this is peak power, not continual power. Continual power is a 250 watt maximum legal limit that all the e-bikes do have to conform to, but this is different to that peak power output. The other important figure is torque, and this one has a 90 newton meter torque figure. Shimano and Bosch are both around 75, so this is a particularly torquey motor. In terms of feel through the bike, I feel that torque is more important than peak power output, personally. It gives you that real good ability to grind up a technical feature in, in maybe a slightly lower cadence. It's a big improvement over the previous version of the bike. There's also more sensors in there, so it's a more reactive motor, and that was something I didn't particularly like about the 1.3. Battery capacity is obviously another important aspect when it comes to an e-bike. The Expert gets a 700 watt hour battery, which is up there with most high-end e-bikes these days. A lot of them are coming 600-700 watt hours. The Comp gets a 500 watt hour battery. It's obviously cheaper to manufacture and a little bit lighter too. Specialized haven't given me a jump chart for the Kinevo. However, having ridden it and having ridden the Stump Jump Preview, I'd say the things are very similar. There is a slack head angle at the front, which gives obviously plenty of confidence. The seat angle is fairly steep, so good for technical climbs, and the reach is nice and roomy. As I mentioned before, it's got the S sizing, so a shorter seat tube, so you should be able to fit on a range of different sizes. 
The jump from the 1.3 to the 2.1 motor is noticeable in its performance. The 2.1 is a much smoother, more reactive motor to go and ride with. There's, as I mentioned, a lot of torque, so there's a lot of grunt when you're riding up loose, steep, technical single tracks. On smoother drags, there's very little pulsing from the bike. It feels a very smooth, easy to ride system. The ability to change between modes on the handlebar is another system that I particularly like. I think it is a big improvement over earlier generations of the bike. The Kinevo's rear suspension works as well as you'd expect from specialized four bar FSR linkage. It's fairly plush. It's not as plush as say the new Enduro, but it is you know, nicely controlled. There's plenty of progression through there. Coil sprung bikes always feel really good because there's a lot less friction within the system. So spawn bump sensitivity is great. And this helps with traction. It helps with comfort and control and braking as well. There's a fair amount of progression through the stroke. So on bigger impacts, it's easily dealt with. Obviously you need a slightly heavier spring because you've got a motor in there, but the whole package just works really well. In terms of pedal bob, I don't think that's a particularly important aspect on an e-bike. You tend to spend more time set down and it's rare that you're sprinting. However, on more mellow descents when you're out of the saddle trying to pick up speed above the motor's assistance, you can feel a little bit of pedal bob in there. I don't think you can really get away from that. However, it never felt particularly sluggish. The bike has a slack head angle and with that boxer fork up front, there was a lot of confidence. I think moving to a boxer is a stroke of genius from Specialized. We've seen manufacturers such as Fox create e-bike specific forks with stiffer chassis because there's a lot more weight and so there's relatively more twist in the system. Dual crown fork, there's more inherent stability within that. On off camber trails or through rock gardens, there's less wheel deflection, which gives a more stable, safer ride. It's still a very comfortable fork. It's not harsh in any way, shape or form. The damping is very good as well. So, I do think it's a very good fork to put on the front of an e-bike. However, there are some livability issues with that. You can't turn the fork 90 degrees for storage particularly easily, nor can you twist the bars. So if you've got limited storage space or you need to put the bike in a car on a frequent basis, I think it would become a bit of a pain in the ass. The new frame is well made. It's got excellent bang up to date geometry. The suspension at the back is spot on and the box of fork up front is a stroke of genius if you can live with it. The new motor is also a vast improvement. So overall, I think they've done a great job. Obviously, we want to ride this bike in the UK on more familiar trails and back to back with other top end e-bikes. So once we've done that, we'll give you a full test on bike radar. Let us know what you think. Is putting a downhill fork on the front of an e-bike the new future of e-biking? In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe and click the little bell for notifications of all our new videos on the Bike Radar YouTube channel.